Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. You probably have noticed that I use 3D printing a lot in my projects. You know, kits, cases, antenna projects. Uh, I just print stuff all the time. That's why I previously reviewed a couple uh, 3D printers. And I'm probably going to review more uh, 3D printing stuff because for amateur radio, it's just so useful. And it just happens that Creality has sent me something that I'm going to show you. <laughs> now, before I, uh, well, you know, if you've seen the title, but actually um, I do design my 3D uh, printed designs using uh, Tinkercad and it's uh, that's in your browser. So it's a web browser. You go to your web browser, you put tinkercad.com and you actually have a program that's fairly simple, pretty easy to use and you can design fairly simple shapes. Now, when it gets a little more complicated, uh, you know, I just can't do it. Now, I should have learned Fusion 360 a long time ago. It's still on my list. I still want to do it, but I just have to find the time. Now, the difficulty is when you have objects that are already existing and that you want to reproduce. Now, of course, you can take a calipers, pair of calipers and measure everything and make a drawing. And <laughs> it's going to take you a lot of time and you're probably going to make mistakes. And that's when the Creality Scanner comes in. <laughs> which allows you to scan an object, import it into your software, make a few changes if you need to, and then 3D print it. And that's what I'm going to show you. So let's look at what's in the box. I am discovering it at the same time you are here. I haven't looked at this yet. So, uh, well, manual, okay, that might come handy, that's for sure. And what's in here? Actually, this thing here is the wireless bridge to, to scan wirelessly, which I'm going to do with my Mac. We have a handle, which probably has a battery in it. Uh, it's fairly heavy, so yeah, probably a battery in there. Controls, LEDs, very nice, uh, seems to be pretty good quality. Here we have uh, what looks like LEDs and a camera lens. Wow, this is pretty complete. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. We have a support here that uh, looks like it's for a phone, cell phone. That's probably the support for the uh, LED slash camera module. That's just this one. Oh, we have a nice little tripod. That's pretty cool, looks good. I might use this for my camera actually once in a while. Nice. Then we have what's in the uh, the pouch here and uh, probably cables. Yep, ooh, bunch of cables, absolutely. More cables. Uh, that's probably some kind of a template for uh, adjusting the scanner. We'll see about that in the manual. And that's about it, so that's, oops, nope. A, oh, a USB adapter, USB-C. Oh, actually, I wanted to buy one of those. Cool. All right, guys, so now that's what I have to do. Read the manual. <laughs> All right, so I found the uh, the page here with the downloads. That's on the manual. And I'm going to download it for my Mac. And we'll take the DMG. And we're going to install it. I can then uh, later download it for uh, Android as well. But I'm going to be filming with my phone, so I'm not sure I want to do it with uh, with Android. All right, let's see. DMG, let's install it. And here we go. And of course, it's a Mac, so it's very simple. All right, let's see. I think it's Wi-Fi, so it's, it is Wi-Fi, actually. So you can scan on your computer. Open. Access to the external camera, uh, I guess.
All right, so we have a little bit of a, uh, uh, some advice here. Recommend human face, body, sculpture, carvings, etc. Uh, not suitable for transparent, reflective, through holes, very thin, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's, that makes sense. How to choose a proper scanning setting. Geometry mode, texture mode, marker mode. All right, so probably uh, we'll probably use geometry mode. Initial setup and guide, uh, USB connecting, 3USB, uh, blah, 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 uh, for faster data transfer. Okay, I'm not going to uh, uh, walk you through all that. I'm going to do it and then uh, I'll show you. And uh, it seems pretty simple, so let's put it together. By the way, uh, this scanner has a precision of 0.1 millimeters, and that's really precise. Uh, of course, you can scan wirelessly. You have 24-bit uh, processing, and it even has an ASIC chip. And an ASIC is a chip that is specially uh, designed for video processing, a certain type of video processing, and those cost a bundle. Apparently, it can also scan objects that are black or made of metal without having to spray them. And I don't know anything about that. Apparently, you have to spray stuff uh, uh, with other scanners, but not this one. You can also scan an object that's two meters in size, and that's pretty darn big. I don't know how you would print that, but <laughs> you can scan it. I guess you can scan a big object like a, a model, a person, and, and reduce it and then print a figurine of it. So this is how you plug it in with the uh, Wi-Fi bridge, this part here, and the scanner up front. And you have the uh, the handle, which of course has a battery in it, so it provides the power to the Wi-Fi bridge, which is connected with this cable to the scanner. And that's all you have to do, and you can scan just like that and be connected via Wi-Fi to your computer. Oh, let's try that <laughs> face. I'm going to scan my face. Uh, let's see what happens. I, uh, we'll do it fast. Co uh, we don't need color. Turntable, I don't know. Uh, and uh, new scan. All right, let's see. <laughs> let's see how good I'm. Oh, that's uh, wow, that's pretty cool. Unbelievable. Look at that. That is just crazy, guys. Got my face, my neck, my glasses, my eyes behind the glasses. Amazing. Could print a mask. Well, anyway, that's fun, but uh, that's not what we want to do, right? We want to scan something useful. My face isn't useful. <laughs> Only to me. Export. And it's a PLY file. Huh. Okay, are there other formats? STL, yes. Oh, that's what I wanted, STL. STL, guys, is the format that all uh, 3D printers use. I mean, actually, that's used by Cura, the, uh, the slicer. So uh, you absolutely want STL, and I do want that. So let's do that. By the way, I'm connected to the uh, ferret Wi-Fi. So that's what shows up when you uh, plug it in, and uh, it turns on, and you get this ferret with a number, and there's no password. Just connect to it, and that's it. By the way, I tried to scan a little uh, plastic winder and I forgot that you cannot scan an object that's moving. So the object should be stationary. So of course that didn't work. Then I doubled up <laughs> trying to scan it on the floor. And of course you are not supposed to scan very thin objects and objects that are reflective. And that one was fairly reflective. I also wondered if the fact that it's orange and the scanner uses uh, infrared LEDs, if that could have been a problem also. Basically, I did everything that you're not supposed to do.
I'm going to try to scan this uh, little uh, Yesu FT70D and remember those uh, weird uh, stickers? Well, I learned that uh, it is used to make scanning easier. So I'm going to stick one here because it's reflective. So let's put a dot here. Actually, let's put a couple there. Just maybe. <laughs> Looks happy, right? All right, I put a few. <laughs> it's a good thing they give you a lot of them. And uh, that should definitely help the scanning. I've tried before without the dots, and I have to say it didn't work too well. It was very difficult, but... Um, and you have to know, guys, uh, you might have to redo a scan a few times. It depends on the object, depends on how reflective it is. Uh, but with the dots, uh, it seems to help quite a bit. New scan. Find the distance. Start the scan. And scan. Of course you have to work on the object, you know, it's not going to be complete. Uh, if I wanted to have the whole thing, I would have to uh, to scan it better <laughs> and uh, then uh, work on it on a, uh, pro a 3D program. Now you have also, uh, you have to know that uh, a program like Tinkercad, which is really for beginners, is not going to accept large files like that. But uh, a program like Fusion 360 certainly will. Okay, I'm getting the side here, which I didn't do before. Let it catch up. That looks better, guys, better. All right. Complete, yes. Process, yes. You know what would work really well is one of those uh, round uh, presentation little uh, su uh, supports, you know, that, that rotate with a motor in it. That would work really well for that. That would make the scan so much uh, smoother. I can complain though, but uh, again, it's it's not always easy, but I think I did pretty well here. Yep, 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 very nice. I didn't scan the back, of course, but I could have. I even can see the thickness of the stickers on the screen. All right, it's a pass for me. Uh, not easy, but... Uh, Definitely doable. All right, so quick recap. It is wireless. Also, it has 24-bit uh, full color processing, anti-shake. It's uh, precise to 0 0.1 millimeters, and you can scan two meter, uh, so basically a person. <laughs> and uh, it's supposed to work with uh, black metal objects without spraying. Now, again, I don't know anything about spraying, but I guess that's a plus. All right, so believe it or not, I do refuse a lot of product reviews because they're simply not pertinent to amateur radio. But 3D printing is very pertinent to amateur radio. Actually, my printer is printing right now. <laughs> a, a box for a mesh-tastic uh, device. So it's extremely useful. But is scanning extremely useful? Well. I'm not so sure about that, but I do know for sure that when you need it, it's something that's really irreplaceable that I couldn't do without. So I'm probably not going to use it very often, but I know that when I'll need it, I'll be very happy I have it. Because of course, you could save weeks of work by scanning something that is very difficult to reproduce. So I decided to present it to you and hopefully uh, you found that informative. I have found no problem with this product. Uh, it works fairly well. It's not the answer to everything, of course, and it has uh, issues that I think are common to all scanners. Uh, that's to scan objects that are shiny, uh, very thin, and uh, especially, you know, certain surfaces are not very conductive to being scanned. But for most other stuff, it works. 
Until next time, have a good one.